All right, here we are. We have to start looking at the software codes. To look at it, we will need an IDE. For me, I am using Visual Studio Code as my IDE. You could um, download it or you can use yours. I'm using a VS Code. Visual VS Code. So you go to the browser, um, VS Code, then you download it if that's what you wish to use. For me, that's what I'm using currently. It's not like it's the best, but that's the one I'm using for this tutorial. So you could use yours. So uh, to do that, to spin up Visual Studio Code, you just go to your folder, right click, and then as you can see, it's already here. I'll click on it. Then it opens this particular folder inside my application. Brief overview of the structure of Ion Ionic 3 application. I've opened it into my inside my Visual Studio Code. So what we will do is to run through the folders. Uh, you don't need this. This is like a system folder. Then these are node modules. When you install packages into your Ionic folder or uh, your Ionic app using npm install, this is where the package is saved. Like in the past video, we uninstalled two packages. When you uninstalled um, this particular package, Ionic CLI plugin, um, this is it is it is this is where it was saved until we removed it. All right, so um, that's just the, the npm folder. As you can see, it's the largest folder in your application. There are so many files inside it because there are so many packages. Now the second one is. The resources they just bears uh, the the platforms you're working on. For instance, we're working on uh, we're hoping to work on Android and then iOS. So we have the icons we need for the Android, then the icons we need for the splash screen. Same with the iOS, it comes with our Ionic installation. And uh, apart from the resources, the main folder we'll be working on is this guy here, which is the the source folder. It has the app, the root level components, like if you are um, this is like your controller in Laravel or app controller in Kick PHP if you are coming from web development. So this anything you put here will, will be accessible from all the other pages. Then you have assets where you save your HTML, CSS, and icons and everything. Then you have pages. So everything in your application is a page. In um, Ionic uses Angular as a backend, like I told you. So everything is a component. Everything. Let me show you. So this is a home page. It's basically the home component. And uh, list page, as you can see, is basically the list component. If we click this, it will open another component for us. So everything in every of your pages is a uh, component. So for, for this app, we just have two pages. One is home and the other is component. So if we open it, we we'll discover that there are three files there. First of all is the home.ts. Um, Angular uses a type of a version of JavaScript called TypeScript. It helps you to write object-oriented JavaScript directly. If you're coming from JavaScript background, you see that most of the times you're just writing it procedurally. In a way, in a way, it's just um procedural, just like that. Uh, just calling functions. But this helps you to write it as if you're writing C sharp. It was TypeScript was built by Microsoft. Uh, basically, it was guys that were coding C sharp that wanted to give JavaScript some structure that started coding on um, TypeScript. Then you have the SCSS, which is the SAS files. This is where you write your CSS code, uh, custom CSS code that will affect only the the file. This is it will affect only home, only this home. So if you want to change the color of only home, we will write the custom CSS code in the home.css. But if you want to change the general color of our application, we have to write it in the CSS app.css, which is the main CSS file. This is the global SAS file. So everything you're doing here is like global, all right? And then we have the HTML, which is what people see. As you can see inside this HTML, there's, an, there's a P tag that says if you get lost, the whatever, the link. So if you come here and read, you see that if you get lost, the docs will show you the way, all right? So coming here, you see that uh, this is basically the HTML. And it looks very much like the HTML, you know, just that it's using, it's using Ionic tags. So uh, as you can see right here, we have home so I can change it to the name of our application or whatever we want to call our application um, as the name so for now I can just say welcome so if we go back we'll see that um, it will transpire let me show you as you can see this is rotating it's transpiling so because um, angular is using TypeScript when you run your application, your browser doesn't understand TypeScript because TypeScript is an advanced form of JavaScript. 
I'm explaining it in layman terms. Now, TypeScript was built on ES6. Your a version of JavaScript called ES6, and your browser understands a version of JavaScript called ES5. That's why there is this rotation, rotating. It's transpiling from ES6, which is TypeScript, to ES5. All right. So that's why you have to see that rotation. But then, as you can see, it has now changed to to welcome. And then uh, this is just the HTML. We'll get back to it and we'll work, work it out. So that's just um, your resources folder. And then, of course, you have your HTML folder. When this file compiles, it builds into this file. This is what it builds. All right. And of course, if you are importing any SDK, any icons, anything, this is your basic index.html file. As you can see, it's the basic HTML, 100% basic HTML. So we can import anything we want here, any external files, any SDK, CDN, uh, there's, uh, we'll do it here. And of course, we can manage the name of our applications here. All right, so what we will do on in, in the next um, video is to actually start coding. We are going to import um, Firebase. Firebase is like the database. We are going to go to Firebase, create an account, and import it into our application, and create our user registration and login system. Once it's working, we upload our image, and we are good to go. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.